This is a short one like me, Dudes with Bruges on a Porch, presents Michael Bruges. Dude. Grant Bruges and Casual Conversations, joined with us again is our good friend Goff from Beer Nux Productions. He's got a new flick out there for you to enjoy while you're doing uh, the, your, your quarantine life. Uh, Goff, you're uh, the most reoccurring guest, so, so welcome again. Well, th- thank you very much, Drew. It's always fun to come on the show. Yeah, it's always a, a a lot of fun to have you on the show, and a lot of fun to be able to watch and and see all the the cool stuff that you have going on at Beer Nux Production. You got this uh, this new film. It's a it's a short one. No, it's got a little bit of uh, comedy to it, but it also has a little more serious side of things to it. So, uh, talk about it a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, well, to go back a little bit, in about years ago. I did seven episodes of like a mock fake TV chat show. So kind of like, uh, I don't know, uh, your Graham Norton sort of, uh, I guess, tonight show chat show sort of a format where I interview, you know, fake celebrities. And so I thought I would uh, revisit that because obviously filming at the moment is a little bit tricky. So I needed to come up with a plan where I didn't have a cast and crew of thousands. I needed to scale it back a wee bit. So I thought, well, why not visit the uh, the chat show series format that I was doing and uh, do a couple of new episodes of that because people seem to enjoy them and it's been about four years since I've done any of them. So I just released episode eight, which is the Melanie Holden interview, which is, uh, yeah, the, the latest in the, the chat show series. So it's a little bit of a different uh, different sort of format sort of than what we've done in the past. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I like you know, there's there's kind of like two segments to it ultimately. So the first segment, you're you're uh, talking to this actress and her mom's there and they're a team, and uh, it it really kind of just uh, it doesn't bring you the the controversy that the one would think or one tends to see in the media when it comes to you know parents and and working with their kids and, uh, and with acting. Yeah, yeah. So well, I, I didn't want to. Uh... Uh, when I was writing it, I had two options. I could either go down the cliche route of the usual, you know, over-the-top crazy person, stage mum kind of a situation, or I could go a slightly different route. So I thought I'd go a slightly different route to make it a little bit different so that it's not really what the uh, the folks out there were thinking. But, yeah, you're quite right. There's the, the, Then there's the, uh, the whole other segment to it as well, which, uh, again, is something a bit different. It's not something I've really done before. Uh, so I thought again to just make it a little bit different and mix it up a bit. Yeah, the the second segment of it, you know, without giving too much of it away, uh, I, I thought it was really interesting because you pretty much just take one moment in time and kind of give it various uh, realities to it. So what was your uh, thought process behind that, and how did you how did you even approach writing it? Because you know, at one point it's one person saying this, the next person it's or the next scene it's the the person across the table saying the exact same thing, but it's received and perceived differently. So I thought you did a great job of that, and it really kind of makes you think. Oh, well, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that because you've kind of hit the nail on the head. It's essentially the same moment in time done several different ways, and that's precisely what I was going for. So yeah, you you would. It's made me very happy, actually, that uh, that you took it that way because that was the way it was intended because a few people have come at me with uh, a few different uh, viewpoints to, to that particular segment. And so I suppose uh, it can be taken a few different ways, I guess, but how you described it was exactly my intention. So I'm really thrilled that that's how you saw it. But, uh, yeah, when it came to writing it, I'd sort of written uh, the first scene of that And then I kind of thought to myself, well, what if they had the same conversation but a little bit differently or a different outcome or something different happened? You know, like you say, make it the same but different. And so I did that. And so, yeah, essentially we've got eight different uh, segments of that as well. So I thought it was just a really interesting exercise and a really interesting thing to do when I was writing it. And then uh, when the opportunity came to use it, I was like, yeah, we'll see how this goes filming wise. Because obviously filming it is, uh, I had a few different ways to go with filming it. And uh, I thought, well, it needs to look and be the same. It's got to, it's all got to have the same kind of feel. Otherwise it's not going to work. So yeah, that, that was sort of uh, the rationale behind the way I filmed it. It had to 
it had to all, yeah, like you kind of said, it's the same but different. And so it kind of hopefully makes people think a little bit, which is uh, sort of the goal. Yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, I, I have some things going on with uh, with my life right now. Um, I'm going I'm going back to school to get my master's degree. Um, that's the the goal at least. So, um, oh, good for you, man. That's really cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but um, some things that happened in the, in the in the film kind of been happening to me recently, where you know you tell people uh, what you're doing, and then they're just like. Why the fuck you want to do that or something? You know, like they just like bring you down, and you're just like, "Oh, thanks, Dick." Like you know, like I was like, so like what? Like there's a couple moments in the film that happened there, and I was just like, "Wow, I really feel that." But then it's flipped, and then I was just like, "Well, sometimes maybe I could be that person too. That's that's maybe doing jabs without trying to." Or like, uh, there's a part where uh, she expresses, you know, she wants to go do something. Uh, and she wants her significant other to come along. It's not something he's necessarily interested in, but you know, he could just go along for the fact of supporting her and, and being a part of it. And I was like, you know, I, I've been that person before too, where I wasn't the most supportive. So it, I mean, it, th- this hit on, on a lot of levels. I was like, I wasn't expecting it, but it, uh, it, it, there it was. No, that's cool, man. I'm really glad that uh, you've had that reaction. Cause that, that honestly was the reaction I want from people that, that watch it. Cause Usually my stuff is a bit more on the outrageous side, and I suppose there are little bits and pieces of my usual comedy that sort of uh, make a sneaky appearance in this particular film. But uh, I thought uh, doing something a little bit more thoughtful might be uh, might be a nice idea. So so yeah, I'm I'm glad you had that reaction, and it was important to me as well that I made both the men and women in those those that scene. Uh, at some stage, the man had to be a dick. And at some stage, the woman had to be a dick and, you know, vice versa. At one stage, the guy had to be the hero and vice versa. Right. On one side, the, the girl had to be the good person. So it was important that, you know, I wasn't just laying into one particular person all the time. Because as you rightly say, we all have, we've all been a, an asshole at some point in our time, whether we meant to be or not. We've all accidentally been an asshole and we've all accidentally been a good guy. So it kind of shows how that can sort of happen inadvertently i suppose yeah it was uh it, it was great and it really like i said i really had to think about some things and uh i even like over the weekend came across like situations where uh you know my fiance was like oh i want to do this and she knows that i'm not necessarily into it and i was like damn now's the time where i go yeah we'll do that because that's what you want to do and i'll do my best not to gripe about it <laughs> well that that's it i mean it's all it's all about a little bit of give and take you know it's uh you know, it's kind of, kind of like you said earlier with the, you going back and, and getting your master's, which I think it's, it's really awesome. So, you know, you got to, uh, there's a bit of give and take. I mean, there's sacrifices on both sides when you want to do something like that. So yeah. you, you just need to always sort of, I suppose, consider the people around you. And, and that's sort of what that's about kind of as well. You know, you just got to, you can't just, uh, you can't just do what, uh, what you want to do all the time. You know, it doesn't necessarily work like that. Exactly. So, uh, going into the filming process of this, uh, what kind of was? Did you film this during the the quarantine stuff a little bit, or did you have it kind of on the on on your cloud, or or how'd that work? No. So, uh, in Australia, we're reasonably lucky in that, uh, especially where I live in Australia. So, uh, in Queensland, we only actually have. I think it's six active cases oh, as of today. So that's great. it's pretty much, non, yeah, it's pretty much non-existent in, a, in uh, Queensland. In other parts of Australia, not so much, but Queensland's pretty good. So uh, our, we're still on a reasonably, uh, the, in Australia, they've got the restrictions as a one, two, three level, and we're at level two. So it's sort of like, for an example, you're allowed to have like, uh, I think it's 20 people in restaurants and cafes and pubs and bars but yeah. no more than 20 people. And you're allowed to have, like, I think it's something like uh, 50 people uh, in an open-air area and things like that sort of thing. So we're, we're slowly coming out of all that. So that made it possible for us to film because we're, we're working for start. So you're able to work. So if your work includes people being around you, then that's just how it is. And then obviously three actors or four actors for the other scene. So we're able to sort of split it in two, which made it possible for us to film. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, uh, 
So no, that's good. Yeah, six cases. That's uh, that's pretty crazy. Where Wisconsin is uh, going kind of off the the rails again. We're going up. Yeah, I saw actually because I'm a big fan of the Late Show with Stephen Colbert, and uh, he sort of makes fun of Wisconsin quite a lot because you guys, <laughs> uh, the, the governor apparently said that everything's cool and everybody can go to the pub, and then within like five minutes, some. Somebody had tweeted a shot of a bar. I don't know where it was in Wisconsin, but someone had uh, tweeted a shot of a bar and it was like so overflowing, like it would have been a fire hazard, never mind anything about the virus. It would have been right. like the fire brigade brought it down. There were so many people there. Yeah, it was actually the Wisconsin Supreme Court that overruled the governor's stay-at-home ah, orders. Okay, yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, – it's weird. Yeah, that day that happened, pl- places were just open, places were bumping, and everything was was fire away. Um, so, I don't know. Hopefully, it clears up soon. It's it's weird. What's it like? So, you know, as a filmmaker, uh, I don't know about much in, in Australian film, but, you know, in, in America, we're, we're really getting nothing. It's like next to nothing. So, uh, yeah. is that your experience as well? Yeah, well... Uh... Yeah, the the cinemas are, are one thing that have, the the cinemas have only just opened, and again, you're only allowed twenty people in a movie theater. So, uh, what the, they're not releasing any new films. So they're really they're doing things like uh, Sonic and stuff like that that was yeah. out in like you know March and February March. So they're replaying all of them, and then they're also digging up like classics. So uh, uh, Pulp Fiction and Fight Club and those sort of films have been getting a run as well. So that's what they've been doing at cinemas, but. In regards to Beer Nuts Productions, the good thing about us, of course, is that we're just an independent small production company. So whereas, uh, because we get a lot of big major Hollywood films film on the Gold Coast where I live. So like Thor, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, all those sort of films get filmed on the Gold Coast. Uh, So all of them have been shut down. So for example, there's a new Elvis biopic. It's a Baz Luhrmann film. That got shut down. Tom Hanks was in that. And if you recall... Hmm. He was one of the first to get the Rona. So, right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he was actually filming in Australia when he got it. So uh, that obviously got shut down immediately. And so all of the movie productions have been shut down. But because we're just a small little independent thing, we've been able to keep going. And the other good news for us is that I still have access to the recording studio I use. So while we were on real heavy lockdown, I was still able to go in uh, with some actors and do some audio recording. So Beer Nuts Productions also has an audio page on it. And so on there now we have 13 audio downloads and they're all like 20 minute long comedy sketches. And so uh, we, we put down four audio tracks uh, in the little, uh, what, eight to 10 week block that we were on really heavy lockdown. So uh, yeah, we were able to keep going, which has been really, really neat. So yeah, there's lots of new audio tracks in the audio section of the Beer Nuts Productions website. And, yeah, we were able to get this film done as well because, like I say, we are able to shoot it in two parts with a small crew and a small cast. So we've been pretty lucky in that we've been able to keep going whereas others have not been. So it's good news for me and obviously good news for those out there who enjoy a bit of Beer Nuts Productions uh, nonsense. And now's definitely the time to uh, to d- dive into it, especially, you know, there's not a lot of, like you said, there's not a lot of big movies coming out. I know, like, The King of Staten Island came out on video on demand, Trolls, the second Trolls movie, video on demand. But a lot of times you got to pay, like, 20 bucks just to see that at your home. And I, I get it because it's, like, kind of a theater at home experience, but, it, you know, but it's not. And uh, so, yeah, definitely dive into the the Beer Nux Productions, uh, all their stuff, and uh, help out a, a a fine guy like you. You know who this is. This is what you do. This is your life, and uh, uh, it's all there in one spot. So I think it's I think it's great, and I think it's a good time for people to really explore the the independent world of things. Well, of course, I'd uh, I'd love to argue with you, but I can't. I agree with everything <laughs> you've just said, Drew. So yeah, no, absolutely. Look and. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, I know it sounds corny and whatnot, but I am being sincere when I say that, look, I produce my work to entertain and make people laugh. You know, most of my stuff is comedy based. And so people aren't really in great spirits at the moment because obviously, I mean, it's very, very difficult for folks out there. So if they head over to beernutsproductions.com and I can give them a bit of a laugh for 20 minutes with a film or an audio piece or whatever it might be, 
then that's great. You know, you know, I've been able to, you know, take their mind off all the stresses that are going on at the moment. That's a really great thing. So I obviously, yeah, like you, I obviously encourage everybody to head, head on over to the Beer Nuts Productions website and uh, check out all of our downloads and see what they want to uh, what they want to have a look at or have a listen to because you know if uh, takes your mind off a bit of uh, crap that's going on in the outside world then uh, I say go for it because uh, life's very stressful at the moment so anything yeah. you can do to give yourself a bit of relief is uh, is a good thing you know yeah and things in America are are pretty wild right now like we got multiple things going on yes yes indeed yeah no like I say I, I watch. Uh, it's funny, actually. I get all my American news from watching The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, which is probably not the right way to go about yeah, it. It might be. be said. <laughs> but, you know, again, gives me a laugh. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's a good thing because, you know, uh, life is stressful. And like you said earlier, I mean, it's really difficult at, in Australia at the moment for independent artists, whether they be filmmakers like myself, but even uh, I've got a few friends of mine who play uh, in bands and, you know, right. there's just obviously they've gone from having regular gigs each week to just nothing, you know? So a lot of those guys are really struggling at the moment, you know, cause there's obviously no live music, there's no live comedy. So it's uh, for small independent artists like myself and like, uh, like I say, you know, bands and whatnot, it's really, really tough at the moment for the arts community. So if people can support their local artists, like, you know, so obviously I hire, uh, you know, actors who are currently out of work and crew members who are currently out of work. I'm able to hire them for jobs here and there, which is great. I'm glad that I'm able to do that. But uh, that's the other reason why, obviously, people need to support independent arts because, you know, uh, we, we need to, we want to keep that sort of stuff going, you know, for sure. Right. And, you know, like a lot of people, like you said, that you enjoy, they might not be able to sustain themselves and they might have to hang up like the, the band for a while and figure out something, you know, and in, in years ahead, it could even be like, they're still not touring because they all had to get regular jobs and, uh, Abs and things. They yeah, abso ab absolutely. I mean, the last thing you want is the guy that you enjoy, like, you know, at your local pub, everybody's got a local pub where they go to because they enjoy the live music that they play there. And the last thing you want to do is go back to that pub and, you know, the guy who you enjoy listening to has had to go work in a factory. You know, that's not cool. So if you can go online and, and download his album or, like I say, with me, you know, go online and download some Beer Nuts production stuff and, you know, keep everybody, you know, employed and happy, that's a, that's a great thing that folks out there can do to assist as well. So, yeah. Yeah, and definitely um, with, like, venues too, if you can help any venues out out there because it's uh... – it's crazy. It really is. And now it's uh, in America, there's that extra layer of all the uh, social injustice stuff going on, too, where it's just it's just wild. So it's a uh, 2020 has been been crazy. We're halfway through already. And uh, know, shit right? has gotten yeah. weird. Well, I tell you what, being a beer guy, you'll appreciate this very much. So in Australia, there's uh, Carlton and United Breweries, which is like one of our biggest breweries nationwide. Uh, they've set up it's called uh, support your pub and so you go onto their website and you can buy uh, i think it's like uh, purchase a pint and so essentially you get you pay ten dollars and they give you a, a and, and you nominate what pub you want to donate that ten dollars to and then you get a ten dollar voucher so when you go to that pub you can have a free pint of beer nice. uh, on carlton and united breweries they they, they pay for the beer so uh, I think that's a great little concept. So people have been going online and, you know, so my local pub, for example, I donate $10, print out the voucher, and when I go to the pub, I get a free pint of beer on uh, Carlton and United Breweries, which is a – I mean, it's only 10 bucks, but, I mean, every little bit helps. So, right. you know, it's a great way – great thing they've done to support their local bar and pubs. Yeah, um, there's a, a, a beer beverage uh, distributor company, uh, Wisconsin Distributors, recently. They did a thing called – uh, fridge fest and pretty much what it was and you can check it out on my instagram um you paid you know a certain amount and you get like this at home beer fest so you go home and you get this or you go to the local place that, the pickup place you can order some food and then you get your fridge fest box and it came with like 18 different beers it came with the pretzel necklaces pint glasses uh -huh. all the, all the stuff you need and now it's all taking all up all the room in my refrigerator right now <laughs> And, uh, but I thought, I thought it was awesome. I, there's, there's, I, a lot. I, I, 
Go yeah, ahead. I remember seeing that on your Instagram. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of great things going on right now, which is like leaves me a little hope for humanity. Um because, you know, people are being a little more generous, a little more supportive and uh and, and hopefully being a little more kind. Um so I think I think, you know, the human race isn't going to go extinct yet. Um hopefully not. But, well, there's many more beers to be drunk, so hopefully yeah, not. I know. So with uh, with uh, Beer Next Productions, uh, you know, one thing I can say I also appreciate about this is that it's not necessarily about quarantine because there is a lot of good quarantine content out there, but not everyone wants to, wants that to be the highlight and and consuming their their news feed. But you you tended you 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 brought in another like social. Um, kind of awareness, like we said before, you know, being more of aware of how you come off to somebody or how you're presenting yourself, um, which also makes you think. Uh, so I, I just thought that was pretty interesting. Did you do, did you like stay away from the quarantine stuff on purpose just because we're already consumed by it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I, me personally, I, I've had in Australia, we have a great expression of I've had a gutful, which means I can't take any more. And I've had a gutful of listening to the news and listening about the coronavirus and listening about lock. I know, look, I know it's all very important. And I know what's going on is very sad with people losing their lives and whatnot. And I don't mean to, to, uh, you know, belittle that in any way, shape or form, but I just can't take any more information about it, right. man. I just can't do it. So when, when I was doing the audio tracks uh, back a couple of months ago and this film, the last thing I want to do is talk about lockdown or quarantine or the virus. Cause I mean, I've had just, I can't take it anymore. So I, I just, I don't want P I don't want to produce entertainment of that nature because I think a lot of people are like me and they've had overload and they can't, I think if I was to do anything like that, I think people would switch off immediately, you know? So my job is to take people's mind off of that kind of stuff, not to make them think about it. I mean, maybe, in a year or two when it's all, you know, in the history and in the, in the past, um, maybe then I right. might do something. But for now, I think it's really important to give people out there something to take their minds off all this shit, not make them think about it. You know what I mean? So yeah, purposely stay away from it. Yeah. And it, it really just, the whole situation just, at least in America, it's so weird that like, how hey, you got half the population saying, shit super serious we got to take it seriously and you got the other half that says you know the opposite it's 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 very weird do you have like uh does australia kind of have a disconnect like that uh with the populace or is, are they kind of they seem very level head level headed people so i mean i don't know america no, no. yeah we, we uh uh no it's pretty much i mean I'm just trying to think no th there's no real uh like anti people jumping up and down saying uh, I mean, everybody wants places to be back open again. I right. mean, obviously, everybody wants to go back down, you know, to the cinema and to the pub and to restaurants and out to concerts and whatnot. Everybody wants to do. I mean, I had tickets to go to the football, and obviously, there's no crowds being. I mean, luckily, uh, we're because our numbers are so low, our football leagues were able to start back up again. So we're quite lucky in that regard. So at least we can watch live sport on tv right you know so, so that's that's something you know but um yeah so i mean everybody i mean it's common sense clearly we all want to go and go to games of football and whatnot but it's just it's just not something we can do at the moment unfortunately so we just have to be as patient as we can and hope that you know like i say we're quite lucky in queensland where there's only six active cases so i'm pretty sure within the next three to four weeks that will go down hopefully to zero and then we'll be on no restrictions, which would be fantastic. So yeah, they're, they're just, uh, you, 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 unfortunately you can't do much about it. You just gotta, you gotta behave yourself and stay indoors and do what you gotta do. Uh, it sucks. It really does suck. There's no doubt about it, but there's no real alternative. And that's kind of the attitude that Australia has sort of adopted. You know, we've got to do it. We don't want to do it, but we got to do it. So what can you do? You know, it's not, it's not fun. But you mm -hmm. just got to try and find. I mean, that's. I suppose one good thing about it is that it gives folks a chance to uh, assess things in regards to you know uh, you know the, like you with your doing your your masters and stuff. It gives people 
a chance to sit down and assess where they're at and where they yeah. want to go and all that sort of stuff. So people need to think of it, I suppose, in a positive way. And as opportunity, like for me, it was the opportunity, okay, because we were right in the middle of pre-production for a film. So it came at like the worst possible time. And I was really shitty for like two days. But then I thought, well, being shitty ain't going to solve the problem. So right. the film's obviously got to be put on hold. So what can I do? But I still had access to my recording studio. So it gave me the opportunity to go through my scripts and find a bunch of audio tracks that I hadn't recorded down yet. And I was like, well, what a great opportunity to punch out some audio tracks. And it means I can keep the train rolling. I can, like I say, I gave some actors some work, which was really nice. And they did a great job. And the audio tracks turned out fantastic. So I was thrilled with that. And then obviously uh, we come in and we do this Melanie Holden interview and I got uh, two more episodes of this chat show that I've written, which I want to do. So, you know, so it's uh, it's kind of I've had to take a bit of a left turn, but, you know, I choose to take the positive of it all. You know what I mean? So, sure. yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah, I look forward to uh, the, the future episodes of uh, the chat show and, um, and, and seeing those. Uh, let's remind the folks again where they can – uh, have access to beer nuts productions where can they you know see what's going on in the world of golf and and all the good things over in uh Abs Queensland. yeah ab ab absolutely so beernutsproductions.com is a website and that's where folks can download all of the uh the magic that we make and of course we're all over social media so twitter instagram facebook youtube whatever you're on we're on so just type in beer nuts productions and we will come up. So essentially hit up Google and just type in Beer Nuts Productions and whatever you want, we, we've uh, we've got you covered. So, yeah, that's the way to do it. Awesome. And I look, like I said, I look forward to the, the, the work that's coming up in the future. I've, I've enjoyed everything that we've that I've seen so far. Um, you know, you got a great thing going on, and I really appreciate you always coming on the show and, uh, and reaching out anytime you got something great going on. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Drew. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I feel kind of like... Uh, an honorary uh, dude sitting on the the porch with a broom. That's so right. I feel, uh, I feel kind. Uh, I feel kind of special. It's it's. Uh, I I always like to ask you a beer question. Is there a, a particular beer at the moment that uh, you're you're enjoying? I so I've had a, a little bit of a variety lately with that fridge fest, and I have been looking for those ginger beers. Um, and oh, I yes. I haven't I haven't been able to. I found like ginger beer, but it's not alcoholic. So um, ah. I'm I'm looking for those. Um, stuff that I've been drinking lately, I've just kind of been, um, I don't know. I've been kind of just reaching whatever I can find. And I, I've, the fridge fest had a little bit of, of a variety, a variety to it. It actually had a, a non-alcoholic beer, which I thought was kind of weird. Cause I don't, I, no, I don't, really... I don't, I don't like them to be honest. I, I've had one before. I didn't like the taste so much. It, I don't care what people say. I reckon it tastes different. Yeah, I think so too. It it does taste a little bit different, and um, you know, if that's uh, your way of getting that beer taste uh, without triggering anything or or getting yourself into a bad habit, I'm all for it. But uh, me personally, um, I'm kind of been leaning more towards um, I've been drinking more sours uh, because uh, my fiance Crystal really likes sours, so I'll drink those with her. I'll try those with her. Um, otherwise, like any like fruity IPA. Or anything that has like you know a citrus, I, I'm kind of leaning towards those lately. Okay, well, where because uh, I had to move out of my office when all this uh, crap went down, uh, we kind of got kicked out of our, our office, which sucked. So I had to find a new space, and it took a while. Obviously, everything's locked down, so it was kind of funny. I was rehearsing the actors in a park like a homeless person. It was kind of <laughs> it was kind of funny, but I finally found a place to rehearse and, and uh, like a new office setup. And it's right next door. You're going to love this. It's right next door a, to a gin distillery. Nice. So, uh, yeah, and I'm not a gin drinker, but I went in there the because I would had a very, very long day. And so I went in there and I said, oh, just give me a shot of gin because I don't usually drink gin. I don't right. know. It's, it's not my not my go. But uh, And it was quite nice, actually. You could, for 20 bucks, uh, which would be in American dollars, maybe 25 American dollars, uh, you could get – uh, a t they called it a tasting plate. And so essentially it was three shots of gin with two different mixes. And they told you which went with which, and they were quite delicious. That's so uh, it's called granddad Jack's. It's just a local little uh, distillery uh, in Miami here on the gold coast. 
Um, but yeah, I, I yeah, I didn't think I would ever enjoy gin. But uh, yeah, so my office is right next door to a gin distillery, and actually the place itself. It used to be a surfboard warehouse because Miami nice. is right on the beach. And so uh, it's this big uh, warehouse-looking thing that they've turned into a gin distillery, and it's super cool. It's not uh, not usually the place I'd, I'd enjoy going to because it's, uh, it's very sort of hipster trendy, which isn't my go at all. But I really enjoyed it. It was uh, good uh, good drinking and, uh, and a really cool atmosphere. So I can't wait for crowds to be allowed back in there because – Obviously, they're only allowed 20 people at a time. So I'm looking forward to crowds being allowed back in there because I reckon put some live music in there. I reckon that place would be jumping. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I look forward to when the the world can open up a little bit more. Like I said, Wisconsin's pretty much, they're kind of leaving it up to the the owners of the places. And some places are, you know, enforcing that six foot, you know, groups of this or or less, um, which is which is cool. We've we've gone exploring a little bit like we were uh, on a little weekend getaway up in door county which is like north of where i'm at um it's like kind of like a lot of like bougie people go there um so we were trying to feel like i guess we were rich bougie people but uh um (laughs) we stopped at a distillery and it was awesome and um yeah we, we kept our distance and we uh we we had a good time and we're making the best out of it so it's uh you know so far so good we're we're okay yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's all we could hope for, isn't it? Just uh, and then fingers crossed that uh, they come up with a vaccine nice and quick. Because as soon as they do that, the uh, the doors will all open again. Because obviously, it, you know, that's yeah. uh, that's green light. So yeah. So fingers crossed, it all sort of goes away nice and quickly. You know. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, man. Thanks again for coming on, and uh, we really appreciate it. I'll uh, you can find uh, the Beer Knox production. Uh, link in the description of this episode and uh, make sure you're checking them out like them on facebook like them on or follow them on twitter instagram all that stuff uh download some movies download some some audio work and uh support your local artists and uh and our friends at uh beer nuts productions thank you drew so much for having me on the show i really do appreciate it yeah anytime thanks pew pew audio goodbye everyone